What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to take a quick look at Marimo, which is an open source reactive Python notebook, and it also allows us to share our notebooks as web applications. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to take a brief look at Marimo in this video today, which is, as I already mentioned, an open source reactive Python notebook. Now, I want to get started right away by giving you a little preview by showing you an example here of a Marimo notebook. So you know what we're talking about here before we get into the installation and everything. This is what a Marimo notebook looks like. And you can see it looks quite similar to a Jupyter notebook. We have individual cells of code, we can add some code here, we can have multiple cells, I can add some cells here and everything quite similar to a Jupyter notebook. But the major difference is that this is a reactive notebook, which means that the cells are updated when the things that they depend on are updated. So to give you an example, I have a slider here, which is uh, defined to be x. So x is equal to a Marimo slider from one to five, this is just a value range. And when I execute x, or when I just type x in the cell and run it, I get the UI element up here. So I have the slider now I can use it. And down below, I have some cells that refer to the value of x. So hello world, the value of x is x dot value or the formula is e to the power of x times sine of x and uh, then the result of the respective expression. And down here, I even have a little plot that takes some values and then takes them to the power of x and visualizes the result. So all of these cells depend on x. So what happens in a reactive notebook is that when I update the value of x, all these dependent cells are updated as well. So you can see the plot changes, you can see the formula changes, you can see this changes here, all of this changes because it's connected to the slider. That is what it means to have a reactive notebook. In addition to that, you can see that all of this runs in an ordinary Python file. This is not an IPYNB, this is not some special format. We don't have some confusing meta information in there. We just have raw Python code functions and annotations that represent the content of this notebook. And Another thing that is super interesting about Marimo is that this now here is opened in editing mode. So I have this notebook opened up here and I can change the code, I can see the code and everything. All of this can also be hosted or run as a web application. So I can close this, I can run a different command, which we're going to talk about in a second. And then as a result of that, uh, what I get is I get for the same file, I didn't change anything, I just changed the command, I ran in the command line. And now I have the exact same notebook, but without a code, just the application. So we can take notebooks and turn them into actual applications here using Marimo. That is what this is about. Um, Alright, so let's get started. The first thing you need to do is you need to install Marimo. For this, you want to open up your command line and you want to type pip or pip3 install Marimo. And then we can navigate to our favorite working directory. In my case, this is my current directory. And here now I'm going to run the following command, I'm going to run Marimo tutorial intro, which is basically just a Marimo notebook that shows you how to use Marimo if you're interested in that. So basically, you can see here it explains sliders equal to slider, then it shows me how to use that. In this case, now I run the command um, that it or not necessarily the command it, it's the effect it has is it takes the icon and multiplies it by the slider value. So it repeats it that many times. Uh, then I also have some UI elements that I can use here just basically showcases how to do everything. And I can for example, here change this to true. Oh, I don't have them bindings here it seems actually I should have them bindings. Maybe if I exclude not sure if this is going to work. No, probably not, right? Oh, I do actually have them bindings. There you go. Um, so change this equal to true, I can run this, then this change the value of this box Then I have here. Uh, also the execution order, some notes, then I can scroll down here, I can also use a drop down with UI drop down, which allows me to choose a different icon to repeat. And this is just a simple tutorial, you can take a look at this if you want to, I don't want to spend too much time doing this. I want to explore more interesting examples. But this is the tutorial, you can take a look at it. And the interesting thing is now you can either write your own notebooks, or you can also use existing notebooks to see what Jupyter uh, what, what Marimo is capable of. So let's close this for a second. Let's move this back here. And let's create our own notebook. How can we do that? 
all I have to do is I have to say Marimo edit and then the name of the notebook. So for example, example.py. This is going to open this now in my browser and I just have to take the window, move it to the screen. And now I have an empty Marimo notebook and I can do the same thing as before. I can just import stuff. I can say import or actually does that by default import Marimo SMO. And then I can just do some basic stuff like X is equal to M O U I slider. And then I can say I want to have a value between zero and 200. And when I now type X in a cell and run this cell, I get this slider. And if I now want to do something like I want to have some text that depends on the value, what I can do is I can say M O markdown, for example, and then just, uh, I don't know, the value is basically the same stuff that we did before X dot value. And then let's make this an F string, run this and you can see that now this is connected and I can change the value, which also changes the output value. Now, of course, I could go ahead and show you all the different uh, things that we can do. I don't want to make this a crash course on Marimo. I think the documentation or the the usage is quite straightforward. The tutorial is also quite straightforward. It's not difficult to figure out what you can do with Marimo. I want to show you the examples from the actual repository. So what you can do is you can use uh, or you can go to GitHub and then slash Marimo team slash Marimo. You will find a link to it in the description down below and you will find this repository here. Now what you want to do is you want to clone this repository if you want to also try this. And this repository, if I say git clone, there you go, contains a directory called examples. You can actually see it here in the GitHub page. So examples, and then I have some examples here that actually make use of, um, of the Marimo framework. So what I can do is I can go to Marimo. I can go to examples and then I can choose an example to look at. Uh, what's an interesting example? I think that in AI we have in data, we have something called a data labeler. So let's say you have some data set, but it's unlabeled and you want to label it with human intelligence. What you can do is you can use this Marimo notebook here. So Marimo run is the way you run a notebook as an application. If I run the data labeler, what's going to happen is I have this application here, which is a Marimo notebook. We can take a look at this in a second. And what happens here is I have these different example images and I can say, are they real or AI generated? I can say real and some notes and then I can say next and then I can say AI generated and some notes and so on and so forth. If I quit now, you will see that I have this uh, labels.json file, which is basically my labeled data. Doesn't really matter too much what it does, but I can also run the same Marimo notebook using the edit command to see what it actually does. And now it doesn't look like an application that much anymore. It looks like a notebook, which is the exact same file that I'm using here. So I still have uh, the same functionality, but you can see I have UI number. Uh, I have a previous button, next button, which are defined up here. So just Marimo buttons linked to functions, increment index, decrement index, which are defined here. And then I have the whole logic down here, how everything is labeled and exported and everything like that. But you can see that I can write such an application as a Marimo notebook with all the code, and then I can run it as an application without the code or without showing the code. Um, other examples here are also I wrote down some of them. Uh, we can use for example, this is quite interesting, the I think it was in Miss. Uh, no, actually not. Was it in? No, it was not in machine learning. That's it. It was in this, this one. Yeah, it was the Pokemon stats. So we can go Marimo run Pokemon stats. And uh, what we have here is I can choose a type like, for example, dragon. And what I can do then is I can show the distribution of certain stats, for example, special attack. And then I see the distribution here as a histogram and I can also drill it down for specific Pokemon. So I can choose these two, for example, to compare them. And what I can also do is I can compare multiple types. So for example, if I go with psychic and if I go with fight or fighting, you're going to see that obviously if I compare the distributions, the special attack 
for psychic is going to be higher for fighting it's going to be lower if i change this to attack it's going to be uh kind of different and if i take a look at individual uh, pokemon for example this one here and maybe uh maybe something like what do we have here this one here they are quite different in their distribution doesn't really matter what it what it does exactly here from the understanding of the data again but this is a fully functioning web application that is based on a marimo notebook it's just a marimo notebook executed with the run command if i say marimo edit and then i say uh, pokemon stats i'm gonna see everything that happens behind the scenes now actually Another browser tab is already connected to the kernel. Okay, let me just close this then. There you go. And now you can see how all of this looks behind the scenes. And you can see that the functionality is the same, but I have uh, all of this code here that explains what is happening. So that's the most interesting part to me that you can use this reactive notebook while you're working on it all these cells are updated dynamically and reactively but then you can also run this as an application it's actually hosted in localhost which means on a server it can actually be used as a real web application and the other thing that i mentioned is that if you go to the to the code of these uh to the actual files that represent these notebooks so example and then Pokemon stats, this is a Python file, and this is what it looks like. So if I change something here, this is very readable. This is not like the Jupyter notebooks where you don't know what's happening. It's very, very easy to just look at the code and see how it works. We have app cell as a decorator here. We have these functions that have no name, and these are individual cells, and all the code is here in this Python file, and that's what happens. This is how Marimo notebooks are structured. So I think these are quite interesting uh, notebooks to take a look at. I would recommend giving them a try, especially if you want to build some basic data application. You don't want to, you know, spend time looking into Fast API or Flask or Django. You just want to build something simple and you don't want to use Streamlit or uh, Gradio. You just want to use a notebook and then you want to export it as a web application. This could be quite interesting for you. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.